And our first presentation this morning is Scouting Through Technology. And Amanda, take it away. All right. So good morning. Um, as If you read the subtitle on here, it says, Scouting as usual as we can make it. Uh, we're both going to talk about how to use technology year-round through our programs, but we're also going to talk about how we can keep scouting as usual as possible during this time with COVID. Kick off the morning with some reminders on Zoom nonverbals. Um, Cliff is going to be watching the chat box and the participant log this morning. Uh, if you're wanting to actually ask a question out loud or something, there is a raise hand feature that's over by the participant section. Uh, there's even a, I went to go get coffee, I'll be back in a minute button. Uh, that's my favorite personally. Uh, and then you can also use the chat feature and we'll read your questions out loud. So my name is Amanda. I've been involved in scouting since I was a young girl, first in Girl Scouting and then through the venturing program of the Boy Scouts of America. I now serve as the social media chair for the National Religious Relationships Committee of the Boy Scouts of America. Uh, I've earned my high school God and Life religious emblem and that's the only one I got to earn because that's when I found out about the program. My sister, however, was younger than me and she found out about it in time to become a four star. Uh, and Cliff, if you want to unmute yourself and introduce, that'd be great. And Stephen, if he's having trouble with the mute button, can you help him on that? Actually, while you're sharing, you own my mouse. I own that, right. Get it. <laughs> All right. Well, Cliff is from Dillion, Texas, and he's been involved in these Methodist scouting groups for a while, um, and he'll jump in at different points throughout the presentation. While we're doing that, I'm going to try to find his video so that I can hit that unmute button. Just bear with me for a second. All right, Cliff, I got you. Work. There you go. Hey, y'all finally managed to shut me up. I don't know how you did that. But anyway, as Amanda said, I'm from Dillion, Texas. It's a small town in north central Texas where nobody has ever heard of. Um, been in scouting what seems like forever and thoroughly got involved again with the Methodist group beginning in about 20... 14 maybe, and have since served as as staff for several of the United Methodist Scouters conferences and um, try to just kind of stay out of trouble. And I'm not very successful at that. So, so we're going to divide up this next hour into three different sections. Uh, we'll be able to get you this PowerPoint afterwards. Uh, so. Uh, the next few slides are very word heavy. We realize it, but we wanted you to actually see some of the words that are throughout these social media guidelines. They're available online. You don't have to try to scribble them down quickly. Um, we are gonna start with the Boy Scouts that has, they have a good set of guidelines for a social media presence and the online rules for youth, the framework to work on for that safety online. Again, I know there's a lot of text on the slide. Depending on your device, it may be a little hard to read. Bear with us because this builds that good framework. And what we've also done is we've taken the Girl Scouts social media guidelines and turned those texts red on the same slide as we go through some of those sections so that you can see how the programs both have this set up in order to keep things safe for the youth. Then we're going to talk about some very specific websites for the programs, uh, things they've created for COVID, different resources that have been developed practically overnight as we go around those actual websites to show you where you can find some resources. And then we'll go over how to build a virtual scouting program and share success stories from around the country. So black text will be the Boy Scouts, red text is the corresponding Girl Scouts as we go through these guidelines. So the first one on different guidelines and suggestions they have for the youth is to keep conversations online with everybody in public places, not an email. 
email does work if you're, uh, but it needs to be public in terms of more than two people are on that email list. If a youth ever forgets that they didn't put their adult parent onto that email when they sent it to you, hit reply and make sure you attach that extra parent. That way they've seen the entire conversation uh, and then you can reply to that email. Uh, that way you're not in a one-on-one -on -one situation as you do it. Uh, we also suggest send out the emails to the entire troop or to the leader group or to the unit, the parent committee, um, whatever the group may be that it applies to. That way everyone is getting that same information at the same time and you're keeping by doing those in email, especially if it's like minutes and you're needing to say who to RSVP for events, you're not putting phone numbers and email addresses, especially of youth, out in those public places. If you are on a social media platform, try to keep it as public as possible and stay out of the individual one-on-one -on -one messages. Make sure you have groups that are doing those. The next one with not giving anyone your online, your real last name, phone numbers at your home or school, parents' workplaces, name or location of your school, home address, you know, all of that information people can use to cause issues. Um, look through things. If you're going to be posting photos, especially like a screenshot of a Zoom meeting, a lot of us right now have our first and last name showing. Use a little box in a photo editing tool first, put it over people's names so that you're helping to hide that information. Um, we also, within our own units, we never post youth cell phone information. We'll post their parents' information in like our unit newsletters, which are never on those public places. But that way, when the phone rings, it's the parent, they hand the phone off to the kid to do that RSVP, just as that extra barrier of one-on-one -on -one conversations, et cetera. Uh, also think about it, I mean, same with credit card information. You're not gonna post that online, so don't post your public, um, your personal information out into public spaces. That being said, if you are on this, odds are you're running some sort of an event or other things that isn't your own little unit where everybody has your phone number or your email address and you're needing to say, hey, RSVP to me. Create yourself some sort of an email that's just for your youth ministry or your scouting purposes and you can post that one versus your own private email address. Okay, here's the next couple. Giving passwords out to anybody um, with parents and adults in your family we encourage the youth if they, and their parents that if they're setting up their first email account or their first social media accounts, they give their parent their password. That way the parent can look into it and just keep an eye on what's going on. Um, Facebook and other social media platforms are developing other tools where the parent automatically becomes friends with all of their kids' friends and other things to help with this youth protection. Um, but at the same time, don't give your password out to people. A lot of us use the same passwords for everything, including banking information. Okay, here's the next one. Those awkward emails that you get. These are the ones that, yes, you sent an email, someone took it wrong, they replied angry, uh, they asked you about um, just a weird question that it's tapping into your instincts of, I don't know about this. To have those youth tell an adult if that ever happens. Um, it does happen accidentally because something, when you're looking at a, words on a screen, you don't have inflection in them. Uh, there's no body language to read. It can make things awkward. Try your best to read through emails before you send them to make sure that there's nothing like that in there. But here's an example. I was 17 years old and I got accused in a public email group that as a member of the regional venturing group, I was stealing the Cub Scouts popcorn fundraising in order to travel because this person thought that for a venturing group of officers to travel, they were using the money that was raised by the council through fundraising and therefore it was the, the Cub Scouts worked hard to sell popcorn and we were traveling with it. Something that's completely not true, but they put it out in a public email. We ended up getting one of the council professionals to reply back to that person and correct the situation, all of those. But as a 17 year old, I never should have received that email. Uh, so keep things like that in mind. If it's 
if it messes with your instincts and makes you uncomfortable, tell someone. Um, be careful to whom you talk. Anyone that starts talking about subjects that make you uncomfortable uncomfor is probably an adult that's posing as a kid. Uh, just we've, we've talked about these in other situations. When scouting went virtual, more background and security settings went in place. Uh, Right now, Zoom is starting that as of July 15th, every meeting has to have a password and only people with the password can get in. Scouting was already using those settings as soon as we went virtual in order to add those extra levels of protection. Um, when you're doing breakout rooms, you might have times where during a unit meeting, uh, for Boy Scouts, we call them patrols. For Girl Scouts, it might be different age levels and you're wanting to use a breakout room make sure you have adult leadership in those rooms, make sure it's not just two youth are the only ones from that patrol that showed up and they're going in. Pay attention to how youth protection could come into effect. One suggestion that a lot of councils are using for virtual badge classes or virtual religious emblems programs is that if it's outside of your own unit, so it's an adult that, you're, that the parents aren't, they don't know each other, encourage the parents to come in and sit in on the class for those first few minutes so that they can get comfortable with you. You make sure that the first person you're letting into class isn't suddenly creating a one-on-one -on -one situation. Have that waiting room so you can let everyone in at once, but it allows the youth and the parents to gain comfort. And then the parents can go about doing any other project they have while they're still in the room, but they're still hearing the conversations that are going on. All right. One more slide on ideas for youth. Never agree to meet with someone online um, or that you've only met online, offline, in the real world. Um, this comes up when you're working with youth, such as um, if you have neighborhood youth leaders, if you have Order of the Arrow chapter officers, venturing officers, ones that are going to other units in order to help teach something or they're staffing events as a youth. Make sure that you have adult communication happening between the two units to make sure it's a real event. Um, make sure that there's all of those different safety procedures in place. So we're covering this stuff from the youth perspective just to give you ideas on how to help protect those youth. We're gonna switch over to the unit side and this is where the Girl Scouts have more writing that comes up. Monitor your social media. Um, if if you have a staff member or volunteer that they're monitoring them, if they're not gonna be checking it multiple times a day, set it up so that posts don't go live until they've been approved. Uh, make sure that there's people monitoring things, integrate all your communication between different sources so that you know if someone doesn't have Facebook, maybe they're gonna see it on Instagram. If someone does, never checks their emails, but you have a huge thing you need to send out, tell them on social media, hey, you should check your emails today. We just sent the packet with all the information about summer camp. Um, integrate them so that people can see the information in multiple sources in order to get the way that they're used to communicating. Okay, have a schedule. Uh, what time of a week do you typically want your meetings for, or your minutes from all of your meetings posted about? That way people know that they can log in on Thursday mornings and the minutes will be up there. Um, do you always send out the link for the next Zoom meeting via email 24 hours ahead of the meeting? Have some type of a consistent schedule. Okay, the next one, social media takes a thick skin. Negative conversations are happening already, but now you have a voice in the conversation. And then the Girl Scouts way of saying it where they actually list out on being careful about inappropriate references to race, religion, age, sex, national origin, sexual orientation, marital status, learning disability, physical or mental disability, or political affiliation. For any of the groups we work with, those types of things have no place on our social media pages. Um, also remember that as a youth ministry leader, as a scouting leader, you can never remove that hat on your personal Facebook pages or Instagram channels or any other social media item because you're friends with their parents, 
you're friends with maybe some of the youth members, depending on the platform, and those kids and those young adults are going to see everything you post. So look for things before you post them. This can be as simple as don't post a photo with a red solo cup in it. Um, people will naturally just assume that there's alcohol in that red solo cup versus lemonade or bug juice or anything else. Uh, watch what hand signs and gestures people are making when you're doing group photos. Um, don't post political posts or ranting about things because people see them. Um, we actually have had people removed from scouting units because of things that we've seen them posting outside of their scouting habit or outside of their scouting hobby, uh, but these youth are seeing them and it's causing issues. So watch what you're posting. Right now, there are a lot of negative comments and a lot of back and forth happening on social media with the way that the world is today. Make sure you're telling the whole story. Uh, be prepared to reply to people's posts, correct any inaccurate post. Uh, some of them don't necessarily require a response. Others you'll find people are replying to for you. Um, if you've directly addressed something and the person is still replying back of, well, I don't believe you, etc. Uh, you can always remove those. Uh, but try to be just out there, make comments, keep everything positive. Uh, if you see somebody that is has made a comment on somebody else's, and um, you're going, you know, I don't think they check social media during this time of day because I think they're at work, send them a message and say, hey, I saw someone's comment on one of your posts. You might want to log on and look at it. Amanda? Yes. I had a question. Yep. <clears throat> so if a, a new parent or a new leader wants to come into your group and somebody is already a friends on social media with them and they go, oh, do you want that person online because of their social media post? Is it appropriate to check it out and see what's going on? It's completely appropriate. Um, I am actually the unofficial Central Region Venturing Facebook stalker. Uh, my job for the venturing world within the Boy Scouts for the Central Region is when we are interviewing these high school and college age kids to become officers is to actually go and search through their social media pages for the last six months or so and find things that, you know, you could have used a yellow solo cup instead of a red one in that picture. I know it was on a scouting event, but your college age, well, let's go ahead and take that picture down. Um, so we're checking with different things like that. Paul Huffman, I see you've raised your hand. Uh, I don't know if you can unmute yourself, but I will attempt to find you. Uh, but yeah, it, it's completely it appropriate to look through stuff. Can you talk? Is it unmuted? It's unmuted. Nope. Hey, I got a question. Yes. How, uh, isn't that an evasion of your privacy mm -hmm. by you going in and checking that, that technically to me that that's against our first amendment rights and also against the law because that that that's an invasion of privacy and uh, under the law i mean i'm just using this as a technicality but yeah uh, it can be a technicality do, i don't say they have media. to take I mean, the photos way. down yeah but, i don't say they have to take the photos down we're just photos, looking but, at it but what am i saying it's it's not related to photos but if if i make a post on my facebook page and it's whatever it may be, union related or political, that's my post. It is and your post. that's my right to post. I mean, somebody should yeah. be worrying about what I post if it's not related to scouting and if it's not something that's scouting related or it's related to an activity that where I'm involved in scouting, my activities on my private time and my private life are my, is my own and that shouldn't be a violation of anything. It, it isn't, you are completely allowed to post stuff like that what i'm suggesting and thank you for letting me clarify it uh what i'm suggesting is if you know you have a bunch of scouts that you are accepting as being your friends maybe you're creating a second profile that you're not accepting them on and i know a lot of scout leaders that have that 
um, or you're setting your privacy settings when you're posting things so that the it, it has like an age limit or something on it so the younger ones aren't seeing it. Um, but there's absolutely nothing that we can do or say of, hey, you posted this, you can't be a scout leader. Uh, in these cases, it, when it was somebody that was removed, it was someone who stepped way, way over the line on what they posted. Um, and they it, it was other background issues that we knew about them and they ended up getting removed from scouting because of those things. Um, there was a, a comment, if you don't mind me throwing it. Yes, a please, because I can't see chat. Um, Coming from the chat, there's a couple people who have simply said, realize social media is not private. So if it's a, if it's a public account, um, then what you're actually doing is reflecting your character or who you are publicly. That doesn't mean that political speech or activism shouldn't be a part of who you are. We want you to be engaged. But the other, the other challenge is just to recognize that, um, like BSA does not allow, um, or Girl Scouts for that matter, to show up at a specific political rally in uniform supporting the candidate. And the reason is not because they don't encourage direct participation in active engagement in citizenship, but because there are political statements that are made out of that that don't reflect the values of the organizations that we support. The other person that um, someone else threw one of these out here, uh, Ms. Beverly, thank you for your comment. Um, colleges, universities, even the military, you should be aware the military is doing this as well. Lots of future employees, uh, employers, they are looking at your public uh, presence so if you have a private account, they don't have access. There's no way they could search you and say, oh, that's what, that's what Bob's doing in his private time. Instead, they, they're looking at your public account and um, how your social presence is, giving you the heads up on that their profile will be scrutinized over time, um, is a, a really important element not friending anybody under 18 is a, is a great way of helping to keep yourself separate, but you just need to be aware. If you're on social media, unless your settings are specifically private, you might as well put it on a billboard. Yeah, and we actually, we, for, for the venturing program, because we are working with high school and college that have more social media accounts, um, if they are, an officer for anything above their own unit level, they go through media training where we go over things, especially things like this current slide that's up of if someone asks them about a question, you're going, you know, I, I'm a youth member, that makes me uncomfortable, or I'm in venturing, I have nothing to do with the order of the arrow, or they're getting asked questions these days about the bankruptcy for the Boy Scouts we teach them who they can direct those questions to, what adult they can direct those questions to. Uh, we teach them about different social media things, how to do privacy settings within their own stuff. Um, it's another lesson that they can learn, another teaching point. So uh, anytime you do have stuff that comes up and you're not the appropriate person to answer it, the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, Campfire, they're all really good at posting media reference pages so that people from the, the actual media um, or even people in the community can go there and can get the information directly from the source. All right. Uh, just an easy reminder, be Scout-like, uh, whether that is the Girl Scout law, the Boy Scout law, uh, any character words, um, be scout-like. You can disagree with others' opinions while still remaining polite. Uh, you can, all of these different items, I mean, just if you can't disengage with a person, ask an adult for help or ask a friend, hey, I've got this one, this conversation, it keeps going back and forth, I just can't get out of it, where should I direct them? So, those are things to think about and I just clicked up on slides. Okay. Those are all of the 
guidelines, the ideas of getting started. Let's go actually out and check out some resources that are available. This is a uh, example of what a venturing crew meeting looks like these days. Uh, they are meeting through Zoom, they're meeting through any type of a source. I put this one up and I actually got corrected on it, which I loved that somebody spotted what I had forgotten. Um, when I first had this in my PowerPoint, I had not blacked out names so that you could, because when this person posted it, this was a Google image search for just scouting Zoom meeting. You could see every one of their first and last names that were on there. So as a reminder, if you are doing these, if you take a screenshot before you post it on your own social media, take a black box and block out people's names just as that safety effort. Okay, we're gonna go check out the current website that the Boy Scouts are using for their um, COVID and other scouting at home resources. There are multiple councils and national that have created their own television shows during this time frame, uh, where they're making YouTube videos and posting all the cool stuff they see going on. Um, feel free to watch them. They're great for coming up with ideas on other resources. And Stephen and Cliff, I'm seeing chats pop up, but I can't see them. So let me know if I need to answer anything. Um, the Boy Scouts have come up with what they call 30 and 31 day challenges. They've developed them for a bunch of the different programs uh, that offer different activities and other ideas. Amanda, Amanda um, Ralph has his hand up. But yeah. I Go for it. See ya. Go ahead and unmute yourself, real. Real. Oh, we're well past. We're well past that now. Okay. Um, we'll grab it at the end when we do more Q and A. Um, so these 30 day challenges, the idea is they've taken advancement or different badges and activities and they've turned them into 30 days. Here's a hour long program you could do and by the end of the 30 days, you've earned something. Um, they have links to all of their COVID FAQs are all available. They've divided out to different programs, different helpful articles. Those social media guidelines we went over, they're available right on their website. What I want to look into is they've created a list of out of all of the different merit badges, here are 58 of them that they are saying that they can do uh, through either virtual or social distancing and complete almost all of the requirements. So if you're looking for ideas for your unit, they have actually listed all of those out on their website. Um, so those are available for use as if you're a merit badge counselor in that program. And then what different individual councils are doing, this is the St. Louis Council. They have actually, since they can't have an entire unit go camping at their summer camps because of our current COVID situations, you can register and go camping as an individual family and they're only putting two families on each campsite at different points to keep the social distancing going. Um, they've also created camp kits in a box, which a lot of camp uh, councils are now doing, where you can order a box and it will have all of the different materials you need in order to start working on advancement or a Cub Scout t-shirt and all of the materials you'll need to do a Cub Scout summer camp. So lots of different things that councils are doing in order to help um, keep kids busy. I'm sure there are probably a few of us that are still wondering how exactly hashtags work, which are these bottom three, scouting at home, scouting together, and the national camp in. What a hashtag allows, it's social media's version of searching for something. If you put the pound sign and then a couple of words together, it will pull up any post that somebody has actually put that in as saying, hey, this is relevant if you're doing scouting at home. And so you can quickly see here's resources from all sorts of councils about how to do things. Uh, this national campaign was put together for May 2nd. It was put together in under two weeks. 
um, and it was the fourth largest social media event that Facebook has had in the last five years based on how many posts, interactions, and other metrics that they follow. Um, you can still see the recorded version of it, but the National Office for the Boy Scouts went live for eight hours with videos and challenges, and they had someone from Junior Master Chef that was a scout taught lunch, all sorts of items. I'm seeing more chats popping up. Let me know if I need to reply to anything uh, or any questions right now on the Boy Scouts before we jump over to the Girl Scout section. Actually, there is a new hashtag that just got kicked off. It's hashtag Amanda is awesome. <laughs> There's a new one that I have called hashtag BSA Interfaith Week. You'll see that a lot next week. All right. Elizabeth also pointed out that there's a virtual 5K runs, walk, yes. etc., with uh, various councils. Uh, I've seen virtual marathons. Yep. Uh, various other activities that are that are also fun yeah in my own area we took a small community park and we had one of the scout units their patrol leader council set up a um, orienteering course in that area and then they sent the information to all of the other local units so that families can all come to the park whenever they want to throughout the week and do the orienteering course um, there's things like that happening all around the country this is what camping looks like sometimes. You can tell they're in their living room or somewhere inside their house. They've used fairy lights in order to set up stuff. Uh, and it gives them a fun opportunity to do something besides camping outside where they can't get to at the moment. All right, Girl Scouts. So the Girl Scouts website, they call it Scouts at Home. Um, they are filled with, they're now doing virtual camp sessions that are going on. Uh, they have a virtual events calendar that people are posting on from around the country. They've added in national service projects, working on making masks and other items. Um, they've got just all of their different COVID resources are all located in one website. And as you click in and you view different activities, they actually divide it out by age level. So Amanda, one of the unique things about these uh, Girl Scouts scouting at home mm -hmm. uh, is that you don't have to be a registered Girl Scout. Exactly. Take advantage of the program right now, actually work through journeys, learn, grow, and it's a, it's a really kind of a unique opportunity that if you're interested in Girl Scouts to get a direct taste of the program without having to sign up until yep. we get back in person. Yep, yeah, uh, I mean, they've, they've got tons of activities. You can make a bug box, um, prepare camp meals. They've, they have all sorts of activities that are all age appropriate so that these girls can try out Girl Scouting, see what they think about, and then as we get towards back to normal, um, and we're meeting in person again, you can actually join up and sign the girl, up with the Girl Scouts. Questions about the Girl Scouts and stuff they've got going on. Uh, here are a couple of their hashtags that are available, Girl Scouts at home and Girl Scout strong. And they're also doing camp in a box and virtual badges. Uh, Stephen, you wanna talk briefly about the uh, online faith discussion Zoom that they had a little while ago? Yeah, so one of the things that uh, Girl Scouts is also doing as a part of their uh, shift uh, in emphasis to recognizing faith and working with faith communities, um, they hired a, a faith-based manager for the National Girl Scouts of the USA office. Um, Cara Ball has been on the job for about a year. Uh, and one of the things they wanted to do was to provide support for young ladies during the pandemic. So they hosted a, a awesome girls night where we had faith leaders from seven different faith groups who all answered the question about how they can live their faith in a modern time where things are so 
so hectic and challenging. Uh, from the United Methodist Church, we had Bishop Sue on. It was really cool. We had a mother and daughter from the Muslim faith, a Jewish rabbi. Uh, she was she was really cool as well. Um, we had some Orthodox re represented, Baha'i represented. Uh, we had the Catholic um, catechesis director was on. Uh, and each of these women were able to speak very directly to young women nationally about how they connect faith and Girl Scouts to, to a time when faith actually really is needed. These kinds of virtual events open doors that I think are, are really, really important for all of us. Yeah, yeah, they really do. And the, the Girl Scouts are doing these discussions constantly. Uh, the Boy Scouts have similar ones that different councils are doing. Um, so use social media, find them, get new resources. If you got a backyard, this is what camping looks like. Six months ago, we would have seen a laptop at a camping event for most units and gone, uh, what are you doing? You can't bring technology to scouting. This is when we unplug and we go out in nature and we get away from technology. Nowadays, we're using it so that we can camp in our own backyard and then three or four times during the day, we're all, the entire troop is logging into Zoom and we're going, this is what I made for lunch. What did you make? Um, or we're doing advancement little sections and then you have the afternoon to build your pioneering item and then you go back on Zoom and you showcase it. This is what camping is looking like so we can stay social, we can still camp, but we can still be safe. So going back out, we're looking at Campfire now. Campfire has a uh, page, campfire.org slash COVID-19 dash resources. Uh, they have information and free activities, same as many others do. You can actually type in what information you're wanting and they will send that to you. Uh, so not as many items to click through on their website, but if you send them your email address, they will give you all of the resources that they have. They have actually developed 139 different activities to do with youth across the full spectrum of age ranges. Yeah. Um, so tons of stuff. You just, for their website, you have to type in your email in order to get it. We are talking about religious emblems at different points throughout the la uh, yesterday and today. There are people that are doing these virtually as well, uh, or they're doing them as family study programs, or maybe it's two neighbors that are getting together uh, that six feet apart in the driveway or whatever and working on the programs. So we're going to use that to transition into some faith resources that the groups have. This is the website for the Boy Scouts National Religious uh, Relationships Committee. Uh, we do our best to keep resources all coming up on our blog. Um, this coming week, there will be about 50 new articles posted on here as every class that we're recording for our conference will each have its own article with the description, any resources relevant to that class uh, and the recording of the actual class. Um, but there are all sorts of different helpful resources that are available on that website. Uh, and then when you click in on any of them, this was one we did uh, last year. We had, we turned a virtual faith walk virtual. Um, where we had different representatives from all of these faith groups actually recorded a video answering a few questions about their faith group. And then we posted all of them to social media and linked them to a blog article so that they could be found again in the, uh, at other times. Uh, there is a calendar of religious observances. Um, this was created by the Boy Scouts Committee, uh, but for any given year, you can click in and it will highlight important holidays for different faith groups so that as you're planning events for going into the future and give you a brief description you if your unit has a number of jewish youth you might understand that you don't necessarily want to go camping on one of their big holidays those types of items 
those are all available on this calendar and the calendar goes out a couple of years in advance so that as you're planning different things, it'll highlight um, activities. Funny story, as we started creating this calendar back in probably 2016, uh, it actually was created, the Jewish committee headed up creating it and they asked all the faith groups to submit their holidays. The Catholic Church submitted 365 holidays because they submitted every single one of their saint days. And we went, well, we have to go scouting at some point, so can you narrow these down? And so all the faith groups kept submitting things. Then the, uh, our Jewish representatives sent out the calendar and said, okay, here's what we think we have all of them figured out. And we realized that every single Christian group thought that the others had submitted Easter and Christmas. So those two were not on the calendar. Um, so funny story, but we do have that calendar of resources available. Okay, so this is the United Methodist Men's website in the scouting section. I'm just going to highlight this button called Leaders Resources. It is filled with information and helpful articles and all sorts of other things in order to help develop out scouting items. Um, you can sort them in by different headings and different characters, all sorts of information. Uh, you can find the service rank celebrating our hundred years. The Good Samaritan Award, all sorts of information is available on the website. If you haven't had a chance to look at it, do so. Um, there's tons of resources that can help you out um, as different conferences develop resources. We'll share them there all so that we're not having to all reinvent the same wheel. The Girl Scouts Faith page highlights the My Promise My Faith program, religious recognitions, resources for adult volunteers, um, all sorts of resources available there. And then if you're looking for religious emblems within Protestant, you'll find them on the Pray website. But something that I also like is the denominations page where you can, if you have youth in your unit that are of other denominations, you can find information about them. And uh, Amanda? Yes. Um, had a couple of questions because you're covering so much information and so many good links and everything. A lot of people are getting a little concerned that these uh, these presentations are being recorded and that the um, <clears throat> links and so forth will be available afterwards. And I just wanted to confirm that they were. Yes. And I figured Stephen or you might be able to be a little more specific about how they're going to be distributed. So in registration, the reason we ask for your email is for one, security purposes, so we can send you the Zoom link with the password. We don't end up bombed. The other one is so that afterwards, you will, we will have a common Dropbox that will be available for 30 days. Um, and each one of the presentations with the recording, as well as the slides, will be in that Dropbox. We will also have uh, resources in there um, that will be PDFs and, and Word documents that we'll, you'll be able to click on and directly go to the resources that we talked about. Yeah, so we'll, we're definitely gonna get you guys these links. Um, there is the Bible Basics program with the Patch program. Uh, put your name and your email in there. They'll send you the curriculum for all of these different patches. So that's a great spot to look at. But yeah, we will definitely get you all these links because I know you can't write them down fast enough. Um, but in the PowerPoint, they're all set up as actual links in order to make it easier for you to go to once you get to those. All right, last bit, virtual scouting. When you are actually getting ready to do scouting virtually, there is a YPT warning. There is a program out there called Discord that kind of combines video games with the ability to do groups. Don't use it. Uh, there's one-on-one -on -one situations that you can't avoid and just the Boy Scouts, their, wipe, their youth protection department reviewed it and went, let's not use this one. 
Um, but yet there are ones where, like Minecraft, you can set up a server and you can build fake campsites that look exactly like your summer campsite would have looked like, and then chat with each other within there in order to do different competitions and other things. Uh, so there's ways you can combine video gaming and stuff into it, but Discord is one of the harder ones to do. Zoom has some, it's easy to use, great uh, security settings. If you have less than 15 devices for 40 minutes, it's completely free. Um, if you want more than 15 devices in more than 40 minutes, uh, you can have a room open for up to 24 hours and it's only like 20 bucks a month for one person to have that pro account, set up the link, send it out, and everybody else gets to use it for free. Um, Google Hangouts is a thing. Facebook now has Hangouts. Uh, just watch the one-on-one -on -one situations on getting multiple people joining at the same time to avoid those. If you're thinking about going virtual, think through the questions. How often is your unit going to meet? Um, are patrols or separate age levels, are they gonna meet separately? How can you teach someone how to tie a knot by holding up a rope and going like this with your hands and it, it there's YouTube videos. Think outside of the box to teach how to do advancement. Um, there's videos of, uh, that are great examples on how to tie different types of knots. There's even one on how to tie a friendship knot for a neckerchief. Um, lots of resources available. It's just a matter of searching them and using them. The BSA did come out with some advancement requirement changes per COVID along with the order of the arrow. If you go to those websites, it'll walk you through it. Uh, but things that they are doing is nights of camping. These virtual nights count. If you're camping in your backyard and you're connecting through Zoom or doing other um, connections with your own unit and your entire unit's camping that same weekend, those types of now nights are now counting. Um, so there's things to think about there. So then I'm going to end it on some best stories and then as you guys have some questions and other things, throw them out. Um, different things that we've seen virtual camping. Steven, you got any questions or I'll jump into these. Uh, just one, one comment. The Girl Scouts uh, of the USA has also opened up their, their requirements to match with our current situations and reality. Mm -hmm. Skill shout outs. Uh, think about it as if it's a talent night for your unit. Maybe you have a kid that is really good at like the soccer ball dribbling where you're going on your knees and everything else. They could shoot a video of themselves and you can share it. Or maybe you have a kid that plays the violin and they want to share it. Um, we've had units call them skill shout outs. We've had them call it talent nights. We've had kids create um, a campfire skit with their family acting as their patrol and then the families all share these videos. Share the videos inside of a Zoom meeting and therefore they're not getting posted immediately online. You're not dealing with if you're trying to upload the video to YouTube and it's going, I recognize that background music. That background music is copyrighted. I'm going to mute your entire video now. Um, if you do it through Zoom, you can share those videos as if you were live around a campfire actually acting out the skits there. Uh, Minecraft, I'm not a Minecraft person, but I've seen in districts and councils have entire competitions on building campsites within Minecraft servers. Uh, these virtual camping nights people are doing, merit badges. There is a council in Ohio that is offering for the Boy Scouts a merit badge university with 20 something badges every week of the summer, all through virtual classes. And they're getting enough counselors involved in order to be able to cover things. Uh, the Girls Talk About Faith events that the Girl Scouts did. You can do how to's. If somebody really likes canoeing and their family's going on a canoe trip, have them film little how to's. How do you do the different paddling strokes? What are the parts of a canoe? and send those videos back for units to watch. These camp in a box options are great. Uh, think about it as any type of a website subscription service that will send you all of the tools you need for STEM experiments or all the tools you need to get uh, second class rank advancement done. Um, there's, there's options there. 
virtual boards. Uh, within the Boy Scouts, we call them board of review. It's been a while since I've looked at Girl Scout advancement on if there's a review process at the end of their items. Uh, but for virtual board of reviews, they're doing them through Zoom meetings and they'll let, they'll have all the adults in a room. They'll bring in the scout that's getting ready to do their board. They'll talk through all of the questions and then they'll ask the scout, okay, can you leave the meeting and click the link again in five minutes? That way we can have our discussion without you in the room and then you come back. That's how they're working with boards. Uh, they're even doing Eagle Scout border reviews through different Zoom meetings and virtually in different parts of the country. Okay, and the last one I have on here is reverse parades. Um, these are happening even at nursing homes and in communities not around scouting. But a reverse parade is when everyone gets in their own cars and they drive past a spot at a certain time of the day. And they're honking their horns and they've got signs up and balloons hanging out the windows, whatever they want to do to decorate their own car in order to celebrate a scout's birthday that they couldn't have a party at or to celebrate that they just made Eagle and they're all driving by. We'll catch up on those court of honors once we can all be in person. But meanwhile, we're adding a fun way to celebrate in the moment that somebody has achieved a rank or they've earned an award or it's their birthday. At this point, we're switching into questions, so I'm going to actually stop our screen share so we can see each other. Questions have we uh, got? A couple shout outs. Uh, Susan had a Girl Scout leader who was a friend who did a juggling workshop, a, a friend in quotes. I can imagine which kind of friend that was. Probably fun size. Uh, okay, it was a juggling me. I workshop. Did I did it. Yeah. <laughs> with, uh, with the Girl Scout troop. And they really had a good time. Uh, Tim Pitcock uh, offered a shout out to Kevin Joy's son, Tyler Joy, out in Arizona, which is a, a wonderful place. Um, he just earned his Eagle Scout through a, vent, a virtual border review. Uh, I will mention that one of the unique things about a border review is the opportunity to see and connect personally with people. So this opportunity for youth to try to learn how to connect uh, through Zoom and through digital means actually is a real amazing skill set. Patrol leaders who can run a skillful Zoom with 10 parents that are assistant scoutmasters, 64 kids, plus the peripheral parents watching realize they are, they are already on the track to a good CEO position. Yeah. And when you look at different things within the programs, make them age appropriate. Uh, when we talk about like Boy Scouts for like the entire umbrella of the organization, if you're working with a Cub Scout pack, look at it on things of, do you want to have for the next meeting, everyone shows up in their Halloween costume because it, it builds that excitement. Um, if you're working with the Scouts BSA unit, if you're, maybe you're doing um, a girls meeting and you have everybody dress up as their favorite literature character um, because the girls happen to be working on the reading merit badge. Or maybe the guys are with their Scouts BSA meeting, maybe they're setting up in their backyards, um, ax yards. And they're trying, they're, they're working on what type of pioneering activities they can they create. Make sure if they're doing ax yards, they have appropriate adult supervision and they've actually set them up correctly. Um, but you can do things like that. Uh, maybe it is a competition between the Scouts BSA for girls and the Scouts BSA for boys of which unit while you go out hiking with your family during the week, who can collect the most trash? count every piece you collect and the winning troop has to buy the other troop a pizza the next time we all meet in person. Um, if you're working with venturing, they've been doing a lot of their training courses on goal setting and time management or uh, project management through Zoom so that these young adults at that age uh, can continue to work on their advancement programs and earning their different items. Uh, so Amanda, Beverly yeah. mentioned that the tech savvy youth and that's what we're dealing with so if you as an adult can't figure out how to make something work 
ask the youth. I do that all the time. I'm tech savvy, but I actually have about four venturers that they run their own social media companies where they are doing social media for businesses in their area. Um, and I reach out to them, hey, I've got this idea. How do I make it work? Um, reach out to those youth. They are happy to teach you. Ooh, pack hikes with scavenger hunt list. I love it. And Cubs, the 30 minute Zoom calls, those are perfect for their attention spans. Um, yep, keep it nice and simple and make it fun. Um, add in what you can to different groups, have fun with it. So that's scouting. You can see some of it of how you can do the technology year round, whether you're keeping up the social media page or you're doing unit newsletters. Um, but also in this time frame, doing things virtually. And if you are working with a venturing crew or an ambassador's unit for the Girl Scouts and you have those older youth, you can bring back the college age ones when we're meeting in person by having a Zoom room open on a laptop that's sitting at the end of the table where the rest of the unit is meeting. So once we're back in person, this doesn't have to end. It just becomes a supplement. Wow. That's what I've got for you guys. Stephen, back to you. Okay. So we're, we are going to take a short break at 3.05 p.m. Eastern time. We are uh, going to kick off bringing spirit to your group. This is actually a unique opportunity to connect with each of our individual groups. Uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Campfire, and Big Brothers, Big Sisters, in terms of how you bring your spirit to the group. So you've got about eight minutes to go and get your cup of coffee. If you're doing that, I I still am. Uh, grandsons are too excited to sleep. So I will uh, see you back in about eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 